This is The Long War. I'm Robbie B. And joining me tonight are my normal partners in crime, Kenny Boucher, Stephen Four, and Mike Haspel. What's up, guys? Yo, dog. Great to be here. Hey, what's up, everybody? What's going on, everyone? Oh, Haspel, you didn't have a snappy uh, snappy saying. I was no, waiting for no, it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm slacking today. He's it's a not- turtle shiny and chrome. <laughs> in, Col- in Colorado, Ju- is blue. Juice, juice always keeps it icy. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. So I think we got another great show for everybody tonight. The name of the show is Is Games Workshop Listening, which I think uh, is definitely the buzz right now going around with all the, the stuff that's happening lately, I feel like. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, they've yeah, secretly I mean, I, infiltrated they the show. Yeah, yeah they've, they've infiltrated the show. They... <laughs> You, I mean, to be honest, they would be fools if you don't listen to the public after many a years, right? Yes, especially since it's really easy to to see what the climate is and how everyone feels about you since, like, there is multiple blogs, forums dedicated to the sheer existence of GW. They obviously have people who's got their, their fingers on the pulse. Yeah, you know, and I mean – uh, excuse me, I, I'm just saying that, you know, there's there's people that are, obviously there's haters out there, but there's people offering really good, solid suggestions. And, you know, one of them was, uh, you know, a long war vet, uh, Evan Valdyke, who uh, made this petition, the one back on uh, Change. I think it was Change.org, I forget, but basically some stuff the Games Workshop could try to do because, you know, six months ago a lot of people were fired up, you know, it was the whole, like, Age of Sigmar thing. And, you know, people people were pretty mad at the time. You know, there was a lot of hate out there. A lot of poo was getting thrown back and forth online. And, you know, I just want to, you know, when we get to it here, I, I definitely want to run down that list and then we can, you know, kind of hit mm. each point. A lot of, lot of, lot of feces being thrown at another species. <laughs> to, to say the very least but it's interesting to see as we start going over that petition which got like 17,000 signatures by the way you know that some of the stuff that's happening right now and it's kind of like coming full circle and it's like hmm, I wonder what I, I wonder what other shoes are about to drop you know you know I'd like to hit on that point that you just said like yo Evan phenomenal job like you're talking putting something together and it being touched and signed by 17,000 individuals uh, that just shows like the reach of uh, social medias, and furthermore, like actually how much people, ha- how many people love 40k and actually want the best for the yeah. game, not necessarily the most brokenness for the game. Right? No, yeah. it shows you. It shows you the love. The people love this game. Yeah, and and the petition I felt, you know, and I I've talked to other people about it when it first came out, and folks were like, "Oh, he's nothing but a hater," and I was like, "No, I mm-hmm. think it's." I think it was more on the lines of an intervention. It was done out of love. It was like, hey, we love Games Workshop. We love your products. We love your stuff, but but you're hurting yourself right now, and, and we're trying to help you. And and uh, it, they might have listened. I, I you know we don't know if they actually looked at the petition, but but when we get to it, it's yeah. it seems like it seems like, like they're they answering. Yeah, it seems yeah, yeah. like they I listened. Think- I, I think we can, we'll definitely can and will <laughs> spend a lot of time on that one for sure. But I, I want to hit on the, the tabletop market watch tonight. Um, you know, not necessarily because it's you know some people are going to turn out. Oh, they're talking about just Sigma again. But there is some other exciting products that are out. You know, branded Games Workshop that you know me and Haspel can can hit on too. So I think you know first up there's the new the new age. You know, take take off your Age of Sigmar. I like I like the I like the name so far. They got me. Yeah, right. And and they're chaos to corn. But what they did was two of them actually. They they're existing models that they already put out back in September. But what the what they are is they're put out a new War Scroll and a new figure. It's like an alternate kind of sculpt. You know, kind of like War Machine does with their casters, like a like a double sculpt. Do you think what is what is a War Scroll? What the fuck is that? So a war scroll is basically like a data sheet, and the cats are getting indoors apparently. The, a war scroll is a data sheet for Age of Sigmar. It's their fancy name for it. Oh, okay, it's their thematic name for it. Okay, I'm with it. I was like really mm-hmm. confused. I was like, what the fuck? wait, what's a war scroll? <laughs> can I can I buy that? <laughs> can I have a scroll? <laughs> can I have one? New yes. idea, GW, make war scrolls. Yeah, sounds. I, sounds I will buy them. Um, <laughs> yep. So, like, there's the, the whole alternate sculpt kind of thing. Like, if they made two Vero Tigariuses, would we buy them for 40K? I don't know. Mm. Uh, I mean, if they were two totally awesome different ones, yeah. 
I mean, they could do that. They don't need to do that with special characters. I mean, if they just did librarian with, with, a, with a jump pack, different sculpt. Librarian on bike, different sculpt. Librarian on foot, different well, sculpt. They, yeah, they, well, they mm-hmm. did that with, like, they used to do that with the chaplains. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, that like chaplain with the jump ones. pack was the tightest damn model forever. Dude, and, yeah, and, and don't was... give me – yeah, sorry, Juice. I didn't mean to cut you off. Hit me up. I, I know you're about to say it. I'm going to say it, so I'll let you do it. <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, but there's also like the one of my favorite models, like the Chaplin with his fist up and uh, the Rosarius, you know, versus Chaplin with knots. So like, yeah, I absolutely will buy different skulls. Especially if they gave us a little bit more um, customiz- customiz- customization options. But like, you know, right now mm-hmm. we take a librarian, we put him on a jump pack. He's very static. Give me a librarian in motion on a jump pack. Give me a librarian in motion on a bike. You, you know what I mean? Like. You know, we yeah. would buy those because GW is a different game system. We would absolutely buy character-based models with different uh, with, with with different mount options for sure. Yeah. Or what if what if they came with like what if it, what if the clan pack came with a bike, but it had like the separate legs and the legs you could put on. You know, you could be like, okay, I'm going to put them on the the bike, or like you know, Superman yeah. pose, but. Yeah. If they gave us, that's, cool. that's, that's the other option. More, uh, make them more customizable because right now the mm-hmm. clan packs aren't very customizable. So, but now let's put this in perspective. We asked for these things, but I don't want to say that we get them and then all of a sudden we're shocked when it's an $80 pack. Well, right? I mean, yeah. Because the, seeing... the clan pack right now itself yeah. is like 20 30 bucks, right? So now mm-hmm. you're talking about throwing in an additional set of biker legs, which you got to look at it from their point of view. You cannot use this and just put a Space Marine torso on top. Now you just got to do it on a bike for basically free, you know? So you have to put the legs because that's also the most expensive part in a Space Marine kit because you only get the five or ten depending on how many it is. And then now we've got a bike a jump pack. So, I mean, as long as we're down to like, no, if it's going to be that fully customizable, just we're, we're going to have to pay for it. But like, I think they broke the mold and haven't went back to it since the, uh, since the death company unit, that box that came out for uh, blood angels, that whole line oh, of the death the company and the space rings where it had the jump packs, all the iconography everywhere. You know, it was right around just soon after uh, within the same year, I think that the Space Wolf kit came out for for the new... And this, uh, well, and, and I have to say, the new Wolfen has every possible iteration yeah. of how you can yeah. feel the Wolfen in there. But I guess yeah. what, I, what I'm... And I'm so happy to hear that. I haven't actually seen that kid in my oh, life. Oh, yeah. Well, I expected to have, like, one Storm Shield, one mm-hmm. Thunder Hammer, you know? Yeah. And it has five of on eBay. <laughs> yeah. It has five of everything. Every awesome. possible iteration of how you're going to feel the, the Wolfen is in that pack. But, you know, what's kind of, in my opinion, is left you know, a little lackluster is some of the HQ choices, some of the things like that, where they haven't put the detail in them as some of these the troop choices, per se, that have all the options. Yeah, because yeah. most people, you know what the problem is? Most people, they, they uh, slack on the troops of their army at first and then work on their HQs. And right now we have a really, like, limited HQ uh, quality uh, world and maximum troop quality world. So it is being done well, reverse. And I, I but I feel that's... Uh, this is a it's a it's a byproduct of manufacturing because you know GW has been investing pretty handily and with good result I think in steering away from metals and fine cast and they've been working on those troop kits and everything and it's and the the HQs those single models have been lacking because to make injection molds for the HQ costs a lot of money that's um, true. Mm-hmm. so I think that's what's driving that is that the HQs are still Fine cast for a lot of you know a lot of armies don't even have plastic HQs. It's true because they're old and cast. there's a lot there's a, there's a big investment in time investment and money investment in getting. Well, how about this? All right, let me just throw this out there. Games Workshop, get your get your pads and paper, get your pocket recorder, your your cell phone ready. What don't if, need to oversell it, Rob. We know that you're the spy. We know that you're the inside. <laughs> <laughs> um, what if? Remember the old box sets, and I'm going to say this, and I know Haspel's going to remember. I don't know about you guys. They had an Ar- Enemies of the Imperium and Heroes of the Imperium box set, and it was basically five, like, special characters. Like, like the enemies had, like, Abaddon, you know, uh, I think Drazar. I forget who No else. idea what you're talking about, but I want it. For, for Marines, it had, like, Marnius Calgar, yeah, Dante, yeah, yeah. Uh, Logan Grimnar. 
all of the metal models in the same box. And it was only like 40 or 50 bucks at the time. It was such a good deal because this was right when those models were like 15 bucks each, right, in, in pewter. And um, everybody knows pewter. If you have a pewter model now, that means it's fake. Throw it away. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Uh, <laughs> so I heard a guy at the game store like, what's this metal miniature? Is this real? And I'm just like, I just kind of smirked. It's a mind. counterfeit. I'll buy it for me for $15. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, man. this is. I don't even know where I am right now. Anyways, so what if they spent the money, right, and they made a box set a la Death Watch? And Death Watch has a lot of good sprues in it, a lot of good special characters. But what if they did that? But it was like the super box, like the heroes of the Imperium. And you got the new Mephiston, the new Dante, the new Logan Grimnar, all that. All the money for the development would, would get paid for by that box, you know? Holy with, shit. Yeah, and right? you'd make one. You, you'd just have to pay for one injection mold that you had all those guys on it. just problem solved the whole thing. Exactly. It would be one sprue, but there'd be like mini sprues on it. And then, boom, you got all the develop development costs paid. Now you can go back, and I don't know if this is a real thing. I'm just, I'm just theorizing here. And then break them, break them down on the computer into their own mini sprues, you know, in a year down the road, like you already do. We know you're going to do it. Eight to ten months to twelve months, you start putting these guys out individually. And then, you know, it doesn't oh, matter. You know, the oh, veterans are going to have or it. Or even... But, or even make it more useful because I can see now the hang up there. You can say the new Mephiston comes out with five new honor guard. Oh yeah, you put it in a box set. With, you know like, what I'm saying? So it's one new honor guard or whatever. Yeah. So something that's useful to the box set because obviously buying all the special characters might not be useful. But if you did that, so now you can develop a new Mephiston and five new amazing Marines to accompany them, or like new Death Company or anything. Literally, mm -hmm. just pick any five dope things that are useful. You do that with every single one of those characters. You know, literally, problem solved. Rob, obviously, you're the insider. Just tell, just admit now that you already do work for GW. <laughs> oh, man, I wish I made uh, minimum wage. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so no, I, I, I do. <laughs> I wish I did. <laughs> yeah, actually, I kind of do. Um, for the hours I worked, that would be spectacular. But, you know, th those are just some of my ideas. So Games Workshop's coming out with those, with those new, the three new guys this week. They got a new great Black Library book called Eye of Terra, not Terror. This is Earth with two Fs. So Earth? It's, you know, Earth, it's Eye of Terror. Terra. Um, and then it looks like there's another Black Library book coming out. It's going to focus on Alpha Legion here soon as well. But what I'm super stoked for is... The new, hopefully, Forge World heavy weapons, the ones that are underslung and not that silly, like, shoulder mount kind of deal. Um, we saw some preview pics of those in the new Yeah, preview. Yeah, preview pics look sick. Dude, do you remember, Juice, do you remember that third edition uh, Devastator box set with the pewter bits? Where it was yes. the first time it was all underslung? Yes, absolutely. Oh my God. People were losing their mind. Actually, my favorite one, um, and especially for the time period, was the heavy bolter. Like yes. that heavy bolter looked phenomenal. Was that the one where they all get where the box came with one of each heavy weapon? Yes, all you oh, could God. get was one of each. So glutch, I remember it was glorious. Yep, I. Uh... <laughs> David David loved that heavy bolter too, and he made a whole white scars army with nothing but heavy bolters. Like he's like all special weapons will be heavy bolters. Yep, you know, and the only the next game changing underslung weapon like that I'd have to say is reverting back to that new line of space wolves when it came out was that assault cannon terminator uh upgrade. Oh, where the it, back. But yes, where it had the backpack and the mm -hmm. belt fed auto or assault cannon and all the talisman and everything else hanging off of it. Like, I had that exact same feel, and I didn't play Space Marines back then. You know, I played against them, and I didn't play Space Wolves when that came out, but I played against them. And those two weapons made me feel that exact same thing. Like, oh, my God, if I, 40,000 years in the future, that's fucking me. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that is me, dog. That's your kindred yeah. spirit. I'm this long, it. heavy bolter, <laughs> Marine. Yes, or uh, Thunder Hammer, or excuse me, or Terminator with a big-ass assault cannon, you know. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 No, I, I, you know, I love, I love all those miniatures. So I really, I'm really stoked to see some of that. So Rob, not, so no. on, on tabletop marketplace though, mm -hmm. um, I do appreciate you leaking the future of 40k with us with your inside track <laughs> and knowledge, because uh, they've obviously already hired you as a new CEO, the secret CEO. Secret. Hmm. <laughs> but um, I heard there was some other GW stuff coming up. 
Yes, there is. Um, well, it's not new per se. It's old, but now it's new again. It's um, Lost Patrol. They un- un- unveiled that at Gamma uh, trade show. That was just what last week, I think. Um, and what is it, what is Lost Patrol? I mean, okay, what so, do you mean old? So you, Am I supposed yeah. to know what that was? Well, it came out, man. I want to say in the late '90s or maybe early 2000. Um, it was a it was a really really simple game that came with like five scouts or something like that and a bunch of cardboard markers, and the idea was was it's not like Kill Team. This is not like an evil an even game. It was actually really hard if I remember right. Um, and it would the idea was that you were five Space Marine scouts and you were lost. Um, and if you put down different tiles to form the jungle and the jungle would change and sometimes dudes would get lost on a tile and you'd never see them again. They'd just be gone. Rob, the idea fact, check. Was, fact check my gospel. Is this real? It, yeah. It sure is. And so you were trying to make it through the jungle. It's basically, uh, if you can sum it up, it's get to the chopper. That's, that's the <laughs> thing, right? Is um so you're a lost patrol and they used to have these little cardboard chits called lurkers that would attack you know they'd be out in the jungle and they would hunt these scouts and the scouts are just basically trying to make it to the transport so they can get the hell out of there and that's the goal of the game and it played very fast like 30 minutes like tops they are re-releasing that game and it looks like the price point is going to be like 50 or 60 bucks i want to say it's 60 dollars but but this time they replaced the lurkers with and i know juice is going to like this with juice <laughs> so like, oh. so you get five scouts you're going to get uh, 10 to 12 gene stealers i'm guessing um, and the, the tiles that you put down for the jungles, and they're putting it out as a bigger board game. The, the old Lost Patrol was like a smaller game. It was almost like a little micro game, you know? And, and from what I understand, those tiles, those hex tiles, it's a random setup. Like, you kind of grab them out of, a, like, a bag, and then you put them out, and you're like, oh, all right, I guess I got, <laughs> I yeah. guess I got a river and a cliff, and uh, uh not going to be good. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. badass. So it had a lot of replay value, and I'm I'm happy to see it coming. Obviously, I'm going to buy it. Tur- turns out, turns out I got the quicksand tile, which uh, I have to say, uh, quicksand is not nearly as big of a problem in my adult life as it was when I was a kid. <laughs> Dude, everybody was terrified of quicksand. Yeah, we seriously, I was like, quicksand is going to be a problem. How do we deal with quicksand in our daily lives? Dad, tell me. <laughs> How many times did you ever see quicksand in your whole life? So far, only in the and never any story. <laughs> and uh, and and uh, the Christian doll, which we won't speak about. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's the uh, GW is coming out with that. We've got the um, April sixteenth is Space Marine Day, mm-hmm. so we got to look out for stuff there. Because remember, for the twentieth twenty fifth anniversary, they came out with that sweet uh, Space Marine miniature that was essentially off the cover. It was like a Crimson Fist Marine off the cover of the old Rogue Trader, like first edition rule book. Um, so they're going to be putting out something for the 30th. I think, I think Rob has that dude chilling, chilling right behind him somewhere in his piece of lab. Oh, I wish <laughs> I did. I actually have the, I have the guy, this, the one from games day that's on the cover of the second edition box. Nice. But he's just as cool. Yeah. yeah cool. So we're probably going to see some kind of exclusive mini and something else. Some, that's so they do you think we're going to get a data slate associated with those scouts and g Probably not. I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence because it seems like they're doing rules for everything nowadays. Yeah, you're, like you're, everything's coming with rules. You do have a point, but I mean, the, those scouts, if I, I mean, if, if I remember the game, uh, those scouts were like, you started the game with like, they're all dead. You know what I mean? Like, at least that's the way I played. I was like, well, I have five scouts and they're all dead. So if I make, if I get one guy to the chopper, I, it's a victory. You know what I mean? Like, so, I mean, what if they got a data slate? It was like, get to the chopper, which was like, at any point during the game, they could just go into ongoing reserves or something. Oh, that'd be interesting. And yeah, then they can re- then they can infiltrate, you know, the next turn. Oh, okay. Come back and help their buddies. Yo. It's, it's the tightest cool scout to unit ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, these guys are so good. Um, I think that it only comes in one spur of the gene stealers, though, so I'm not sure. That might be five gene stealers. I forget how many comes in there. 
But you recycle uh, them based on the time, based on the stuff you draw. They had they had more at. Uh, I'm I'm wanting to say that I think it was the Dice Tower, right? Is that's yeah. a thing? Did the they, unboxing? They did an unboxing at Gamma, and it looked like they had more than five Gene Stealers. I could be wrong, but they had like a little, you know, they had more than that. So I don't know how many it would be in there, but I mean, I'm excited. I think me and Juice are gonna have a lot of fun games of uh, his five Juice dealers getting murdered by my five scouts. <laughs> <laughs> oh I've my gosh! What if they got? What if they got frag grenades? What if they, if they got this? frag grenades in the board? Says get a board game. I'm fucked. So. Yeah, I was like, you <laughs> never win. <laughs> um, I I've been playing a lot of the beta of Battlefleet Gothic, and honestly, I I I'm ashamed to say this. I haven't really played the campaign or anything. I've been playing the the like one single player skirmish, just putting up the same kind of you know. I'll put four ships on this side, four ships on that side, and just playing for a half an hour, just blowing stuff up. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun, and so I'm looking to see. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do, and I should sit. I'll probably sit down tonight uh, and play a little bit of the campaign just to see what that's like. Oh, um, so there's different. What are all the different game types? Um, well, right now, honestly, I'm, I'm I'm bad about this, but there's a single player campaign, which, like I said, I haven't played, and then there's like a skirmish mode, and there's multiplayer, and people have been playing multiplayer, but I'm. To be honest, chicken shit. <laughs> I haven't played multiplayer. All right. um, so I've been playing just single player um, skirmish, where you just set up your fleets based on a point system. You know, you're like, oh well, I'll have like 250 points to spend. I'm going to take two of these cruisers and two of these, you know, kind of, uh, you know, scout ships or whatever, and and I'll build the enemy fleet, and we just set it up, and then you just go, you deploy your ships and go out and fight. And it, it's it's you know two dimensional. It's not like home world or something, but but uh, it reflects the board game I think pretty well while keeping it not turn based, you know, because it is an RTS. So, right. um, but it is it's fun, man. I mean, it's it, they got they they have the fun factor in there, and, and it and believe me, there's nothing more satisfying than than lining up on a camp. A ship and just being like, oh, he doesn't know fire torpedoes. I'm just watching that dude just take take a broadside right to the face. It's awesome. <laughs> the only and thing those... more satisfying is doing it back to the loyalist scum. <laughs> the the video cutscenes of that are just spectacular. Like, like just yes, we've scenes. yeah, we've said it before. Like, if GW just had on their web store, like you know how when you go in there and you can like organize your your, uh, purchasing experience by race in 40K, if they just had like this videos embedded in there too, that they're like the same videos they're using from this game, which would be so clutch. Like, I mean, I watched the Chaos one and the Orc one and I was like, oh my God, these are so, this is so classy. Like good voiceover, good sound Mm -hmm. effects, uh, really good artwork and kind of a storyboard with really limited uh, animation uh, style. And it's just like, yo, this literally gets you in the world, man. Like, and GW, you need to just do that. <laughs> yeah, I would love to watch more of that stuff. Um, in, in often, not even just, yeah. you know. Yeah, do you remember how amazing the Dawn of War 2 trailers were? Yes. Oh, gosh. Well, the, the, uh, the intro to Dawn of War one, the first one with that sergeant that what, what the probably arcs? shouldn't be a sergeant because yeah. he abandons a, a fortified position to charge uphill, but whatever. <laughs> to plant the flag. The hog that was important. He was calling him reinforcements. That, that is true. He had to make it to plant the flag. But that blew my mind when I first saw that. I mean, I was just like, this is 40K. Like, and, this is and, amazing. And, dude, in Dawn of War 2, when the Blood Ravens are on the surface and then they get jumped by a bunch of Banshees and a Warp Spider XR, oh, and so then, it, then, then the Dreadnought shows up and starts terminating fools, and then the dude looks up and it's like, you're like, yo, you're going to get fucked by those Banshees. And then he looks at he looks like he's not even concerned. And he just goes <laughs> to his comms and he's like, swoop from the sky, brothers. And then all these assault marines just start dropping in all these Banshees. You're like, suck it, bitches. You know what I mean? And then he has to fight that Eldar Farseer at the end and you think it's over and then you look to the sky and you see like all the spore pots and the tear is dropping in oh. and, then, uh, and then like a Carnifex or a Lictor shows it's up a lic- or, it's a Lictor yeah, it's and like it's unfolds. like yeah and like this dude is like this is like a two wound character at best on his last wound with a chain sword like just killed the Farseer got zapped in the face with like electricity looks up at this Lictor that's just right behind him stands up straight and charges into him and yeah, then like the game hesitation. starts and without, you're like you're so like that's how Space Marines do son yeah. No mercy. 
Like, I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. And then I go to watch the Ultraman movie, and I was like, God damn it, you suck. Uh, well, they had they had a very limited budget. For but realistically, that intro cost more than that entire uh, Ultramarine budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Ultramarine movie have. was hurting on money. Yeah. They just spent uh, it on voice talent. Ah, <laughs> like, oh, man, that, that cast, great. amazing. Very, very proper and amazing. And then the, we got the, what, the Eternal Crusade video game coming out here soon. The, yes, yeah. What would you what would you exactly classify? It's not an MMORPG. It's like third person I would shooter. call it like a massively multiplayer third person shooter. It's it's like imagine do you guys uh I know Kenny did this cuz he kind of broke it. Uh, played <laughs> no, the not Kenny. Monopoly. <laughs> the third the uh the uh Space Marine multiplayer game. The, oh, yeah. on the Xbox. I, brutal, I, brutal, I brutalized that. Yeah, so I it's I would say take that but make it an MMO. Oh, tight. Yeah, no, that'd be awesome. That's so it's like, is it, do, you, do you think it's going to be the same like THQ combat engine? I don't know. I forget what um, they use. But there's fatalities yeah. in it. Well, yeah, they have executions and everything. But I think at THQ, yeah. I think, made that game, and they used a really sick combat engine for that game. And like, uh, I think they borrowed a lot of their uh, inspiration from Gears of War with the pop and shot cover system. Uh, so they, so there's like, so they had the pop and shot mechanics, but they didn't lean on it. Uh, because you're an Astartes, you know what I mean? Yeah, you but, cover, uh, what is that? Yeah, I yeah, remember when I was when I first started playing the game, and I was like, damn, I just can't get through these orcs. And then I thought about it for a second. I was playing it like Gears. I used to play Gears online all the time. I was like, what am I doing? I just ran into these orcs and just ruined them. I was like, oh, you just ruin fools. That's what you do. <laughs> that game, though, the one thing I loved about Space Marine, I think they got it absolutely right, was when you got the jump pack with, like, the Thunder Hammer, Mm-hmm. And you'd just be ruining fools, and then the jump pack would run out every single time. I was like, "Aw." <laughs> one, one of my fa- one of my favorite lines from that game was when they're like in their cruiser coming down, and they're taking fire, and they're like, "Okay, what are we gonna do, Captain?" He's like, "Put on those jump packs. We're jumping out." And he's like, "But, co- but Captain, that's not that goes against the codex, you know, because yeah. command squads don't get jump packs." Yeah, it was it was a super command squads only. Egg. But it, it was a great Easter egg, and it's like so the codec, which Robert Gull- Robert Gullian wrote, yeah, you know, which is what all space Marines follow organization wise, except for like space wolves. He's it's not in the codex, you know, like command squads are not. He, and he's like, he looks at this dude, and he's like, the codec, the codex is not meant to be interpreted so narrowly. And I was like, boom, rules is written versus rules is intended. Yeah, <laughs> forging a narrative, son. <laughs> he jumped, yeah, like I was he like, damn, right there. Mm. It's like word. <laughs> Yo, know, I the Spartan baby kick and everything else. Like I remember just playing through uh, when that game came out, just all the different combos, losing my shit with my buddies. Like, oh my god, did you just see that? That was uh, that was classic when it came out. And the yeah, the backgrounds were dope too. Like when you when you go through that first level, and then you looked off to the right, and there's like a warlord titan out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, wait, yeah. What? And all the background, you know, uh, all the background noises about, like, praise the machine god. And Dude, when you walk in there and it's like, <laughs> you hear the loudspeaker and it's like, uh, like 2,320 employees did not show up today for work. Like, it's like the factory is still, like, holding it against these people. Like, they're gonna, it's going to be docked and shit. <laughs> like, they're all they're dead. All, they're all dead. But, uh, so, yeah, so if Eternal Crusade is that kind of an atmosphere where you can just hop into a game and just get, you know, just mess stuff up with a bunch of orcs or chaos guys or mm. pop out or whatever and hop in and hop out. And I'm really looking forward to it. It sounds like it'd be a lot of fun. So before we get off uh, off, off this tangent, um, I wanted to talk about an experience. Uh, it was actually the first throwing controller rage moment of this me playing this campaign of with Space Marine was when you – got to the checkpoint halfway through the game or less where you ma- fought the orc war boss who's oh. charging around oh, okay gosh. you know he's charging at you and then he screams and then charge at you and stuff like that well right before that checkpoint it gave you all these cool ass weapons it was like this the best ammo dump ever and I yeah, was like, you're like nah I'm good with this yeah yo no no it's it's like yeah it's obviously fine dog I want my I want my fucking thunder hammer I had so much fun with that and um I'll take the sniper rifle oh my god let me tell you what was impossible to do Literally do <laughs> shit against that guy with the thunder hammer. I was I I must have I was like nope I can do this I can do this. 
45 minutes later, I threw the controller, cut the Xbox <laughs> off, had to start over because every time you died, it wouldn't go, wouldn't take me back to that, you know, uh, unicorn of checkpoints. It literally just made me right back yep. into the ring with with this guy, and I was like, after I uh, fought that battle, because I think I was using a uh, melty gun, because uh, yeah. I was like really into shotgun dancing, which was like a Gears of War tactic, mm -hmm. uh, where you know where you come in. Uh, you know, side step, it, side step. Yeah, but I'll roll, roll to the right, roll to the right, shotgun, yeah. roll. Like so, like you get like it phase of its ability. And so, like I was already in love with that tactic, and so I was like, Nah, I'm good with the weapons cast. But after that fight, I was like, Ooh, always take the weapon cast. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, because after that, it was like hordo everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always, whenever they give you it's new almost, weapons, take them. Yeah, it's almost <laughs> like they're trying to tell you something. <laughs> No doubt. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, we should move on to the webcast recap. Mm -hmm. um, we're not quite to our commercial break yet, so I don't want to break us early. Uh, so I'd like to uh, turn it over to Mike Haspel to lead us in the world famous webcast recap. All right. So uh, starting off, we had Sal out of Chicago. He said he's going to be vlogging every day of Adepticon uh, for Strength X Gaming and uh, getting some dope footage of, of all the Army showcases. So that'll be pretty cool. Um, we also had uh, John Parmeter said that because uh, we we're talking and we're gonna get into this later, so this is gonna sound weird. But uh, he, we were talking earlier on the webcast about all the little knickknacks that GW should be selling, you know, like keychains, uh, uh, ponchos, whatever hats, you know. <laughs> no <laughs> lie, I would fucking stuff. buy a GW poncho. I'd buy a camo green poncho with fake, <laughs> bullet, like fake bullet holes screened into it. And like an apparel guards and emblem on. Yeah, like, you know, you, like, you'll get oh a poncho without holes in 15 hours. Now get out yeah. on the line. <laughs> <laughs> Go stand your post, troop. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, so he uh, he said that GW has been adding stuff to his orders, like little Mechanicus pins and Tax Squad pins and like just little knickknacks and stuff. And I'm like, that's really tight, you know. And I remember when I ordered some some thing. I think it was the Long Things pack. I got like a. Uh, a remove before flight, the uh, keychain kind of a thing that was from GW with a yeah, little yeah, like the safety, like the safety band for your parachute to make it so your parachute works. Yeah, yeah, and it was it was awesome. It was unexpected. Yeah. And I, I was got like, one of on my keychain right now. I love it. Yeah, I loved it. It was great. And then uh, Dan Ryan, and if you're listening, you need to uh, you need to like email us and everything because uh, I was not able to get back to you on the webcast recap, but we were talking about Age of Sigmar and some stuff that we're going to talk about later. Uh, like a campaign with a point system. And uh, Dan had a differing opinion, and he said that points would ruin Age of Sigmar. So I'm very curious about why he feels that way, and I would love to get like an email from you uh, explaining why you think points would ruin Age of Sigmar, because that is definitely a, a differing opinion um, that we... That I, I personally want to hear from you on why you think that would be. Um, and that's kind of it for what I had for the recap. Yo, well, Hasma, what was that cat's name with the uh, with that with that question or that statement? Uh, that was Dan Dan Ryan. Dan Ryan, yo, for real, you've got like you know thirty forty minutes to find me on Facebook and ask me that question and finish it up, and we we, we can come back to it because we do have the uh, key, uh, the live Facebook feed going off right now for anyone watching. But I guess we can segue into like this uh, interesting uh, recap that we got from our from our boy uh, Bill. Uh, since you said you were out of um, things to say. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. That's, I was slacking tonight. I apologize. We were having a good time, and, and the veterans were making it easy to have a good time. So Bill Hicks, this guy is clutch. This guy comes in fresh. He's the guy who commissioned this uh, Angels of Carmine tutorial that you're going to see um, in the Hall of Veterans here real soon, or, or like literally end of next month on YouTube for free. He said. This is crazy. Like we might have to reach out to these people. I don't know where they live or whatever. But this might be any YouTube channel will do. But this, I guess, is his other favorite. He says, "Battle the YouTube channels." Uh, go to t uh, Tabletop Tactics. Mm -hmm. I think is the name of the channel, right, Rob? Yep, Tabletop Tactics. Tabletop Tactics versus the Long War Sunday Night Fight Style Pay Per View Best of Five International Beatdown. So I guess they're international. Um, each member of the team uh, versus their guys, like Lawrence, the Beard, and the other guy. He doesn't know his name off the top of his head. Sorry. Uh, he says, winners stay in, Royal Rumble, that shit would be tight. You know, you could obviously do, like, crowdfunding to make it happen so you can go out there, uh, make this happen. And I was like, you know, I can be more on board with an idea. 
Absolutely. That is screaming everything that I'd like to get on board with. And even if we couldn't make the money happen to get out there or them come out here, we could do we can we can unveil our international vassal uh screen yeah. capture and we can do like live commentary like, oh shit, look at that two D rhino get blown up by a two D rocket launcher. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah, I guess if there isn't a language barrier, it's probably doable. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure they're Englishmen or something like that. I don't know. I, I mean, I haven't. I know yeah. I've seen some of their videos online, and I love them. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down to even take it one step further. I'm down to our Beats Lab versus their Beats Lab, whoever they are. You know, whether it's the Tabletop Tactics, whoever, and have live stream feeds and stand-ins. I am oh playing. my God! Like you there, move that. You yes. right over to the yes. left. Right. More left. Rhino. More left. Okay. And, and furthermore, Bishop two to Kings eight. Yeah, yeah we, we, <laughs> three, we have to, to dress up. Five. You know, the the opponents have to dress up like so. The guy who's playing me in in London Beats Lab is got to dress up like me. You know, and vice <laughs> versa. So, um, I feel, I feel like, like now we need to make a a, a grid system. So that yeah. we can use chess notation to play 40k. <laughs> no, my God, chess notation would make it so easy. Just 12 inch squares with with, with uh you know this row's the a, a, uh, alphabet, this row's the the numeric uh, uh, sequence, and then yeah, literally done. But I do like Juice's idea. They absolutely have to. We have to dress like each other. Like the guy who's playing Juice is gonna have to wear really fresh shoes, uh, get his hair done with a sweet yep. fohawk. Um, somebody who, who somebody who is playing. If I have to play the beard on our side, we have to have a dude with a, with a beard, a fresh big ass beard. You might you need know? a baby face um, person too. Just saying. <laughs> just go down to the corner and pick out any teenager. It'll do. Yeah, we got to get some teenager with blonde hair to to be Rob. <laughs> you can get any random homeless guy on the corner to be me. <laughs> okay, I need you to talk in a deep voice. No questions. No questions. <laughs> I like this uh, idea. I think it's doable. I do think it's a doable idea. And so that does take us to our commercial break. We will do our com- – oh, oh, someone just hit me up before we go to commercial break. I want to see this. Oh, this is Zach. Zach, uh, a.k.a. the guy who is doing our chaos armies for oh. uh, Adepticon. Man the beard guy who's painting. Doing, man, his name is he's, he's Man Beard Painting. He's like, I'm all over it. I will be the beard if you need it. <laughs> nice, nice. Stand it. So half, beard. half the battle, half the battle is now completed. literally the beard has been found. Thanks, to Zach. But don't forget to check out Zach's uh, Chaos Army. Uh, it's been going up on Spiky Bits every day. It uh, is sick, or at least, or at least sick. every week. <laughs> every week, every you can see it every day uh, by just going yes. to the archives. Uh, we will be helping him sell these armies. We'll be t- we can take cash while we're at Adepticon. You could walk home with this army on Sunday. But if that's not going to work for you, we can we we'll put these up on the Spiky Bits page. We will be. We'll be trying to sling these uh, and repping them hard, uh, trying to bring Hobby back at Adepticon this year. Anyway, we'll do this commercial break. Deleted scenes, bonus content, all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos. And we're back. Rob, Games Workshop, are they listening? I think they might be. They're listening to somebody. So, like I said, Evan Valdyke earlier uh, did that petition, got 17,000 signatures, which is ridiculous, first of all, because, you know, when you get... 100 followers on YouTube or 100 subscribers rather they're like hey congratulations you could fill a you know you could fill a theater with all the people that are watching your videos and like and yeah and then you take a step back and you're like damn that's true that's, 100 that's people true. yeah but it's 17,000 holy shit that's so that's just i mean to a company like games workshop they might not consider it I'll air quotes a lot but like to people like us i think that's a lot personally yeah, yeah, and I I That's do want to call out uh, Evan for using Gothmog 
as his like handle when he did that that petition because that's like the lord of the balrogs if you're a nerd and read lord of the rings ex- like the expanded edition in the silmarillion and stuff uh so that in was the expanded tight... universe like as i'm fixing <laughs> yeah, my, right. my glasses I'm pushing yeah, my glasses coffee, go get my books man. while i talk about <laughs> <Not just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> i'm pushing my glasses up as i say that well you yeah. know the gothmog was the captain of balrogs in the silmarillion and paul of Nolan. <laughs> so Thank, thank, oh thank you God. for that uh, forty or uh, for that uh, nerd lore update, Haspel. <laughs> right, Rob, Rob so, something today. So, so Rob, why don't you read some of this petition and we can break it down as you read it. So point one: support all types of players, casual and competitive, with focus play, focus rules, FAQs, event support, and campaign play. Make it worth it for veterans and new players alike. Mm. Like so what you did points. there, make it good for veterans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All for veterans. So are they doing that right now? Is, G- is GW doing that right now? You know, that is something that they did. Like, so obviously I would say GW in all is always kind of taking care of the hobbyist. I don't think that's ever been in contention. Mm-mm. You know, like they're, they're coming out with stuff. They're, we just spoke about, Kenny, you've, you've mentioned a couple times about how, why can't you come up with cool trinkets, cool this, this, right, and put your stamp on something, and I'm going to buy it. It's going to be expensive, but we'll buy it, right? Well, they've been doing that. They did the, the hobbyist um, kit tools, you know, and expensive-ass clippers. And You're stuff right, like and, now that, they're right? Putting, and now they're putting their models in big box stores for, yeah. uh, at a smaller price point to get new people. So you're right, they are taking so, care of the hobbyists. What are they doing like, for the veterans? But for the veterans, and that's and for the competitive players, is like that isn't necessarily the case anymore. They've, you know, almost digressed a lot by literally getting rid of the competitive... They did. There's no almost. They vanished. They That's literally true. vanished. And we and every one of us in America here and other parts of the world, but like, we're, you know, we're Americans speaking of America. Everyone has had to build up their own independent GT. Uh, we've, mm-hmm. we've gone through multiple iterations of, 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 F, of nationwide FAQs, regional uh, tournaments and conventions. We've had to fill the void that GW left. So they absolutely did abandon us as tournament players. You know, we actually, I vote that we, on a side note here, just kind of talking, uh, it made me think, an RTT, that terminology is something that GW used to run, which was a rogue trader tournament. That was their events, sure. you know, that, that was sanctioned by them, that there was mm-hmm. prize support, this and this. Well, we just still use that terminology for a single one-day event, right? We I call it, oh, that. just an RTT. You know, so some people who've started in this game from 5th edition on yeah, they're like, no what is idea that? what an <laughs> RTT is. Yep. You know, and, and actually maybe we need to stop giving GW some credit, you know, or come up with our own because that is still kind of branding and kind of spreading their name. It's like, GW, bring back RTTs. Bring yeah. back prize support. Bring I, back our boys. Bring back yeah. some stuff. Um, so I kind of feel they? like they might. I kind of feel like they might. Um... I, I don't I don't have anything you know concrete to go off of, but it's a it's just a feeling like like for instance um, when they when they start bringing back organized play um, that that cascades into other stuff because when you bring back organized play that means you have to answer questions and one of the things that they did this week was they put out and, and it might have been ill advised but they put out um, on a Facebook post. Uh, a request for questions to be answered in an FAQ, and they are saying that the FAQ or the FAQ's new facts are going to be weeks out. That's what they said. Now, granted, they've received at the time of this podcast, I think over two two thousand fifty responses on that thread. So that might be kind of rough for them to answer that stuff. But I was just like, so I mean, trying- all, all repeats aside and haters aside, over a thousand probably individual FAQ. Uh, things that need to be addressed. But and here's the thing too. I just got a, I got an update on this. I was just on the Spiky Bits Hobbies uh, group, and it looks like they're actually going through. Uh, this is from Sam Schaefer from Western Virginia. He says official 40k FAQ responded to my request to have Painboy, Mad Dog, Cyborg, Dork, Dork, Dork. I think he Dork's tools redundancy clarified. It may be getting turned into a six plus plus involved if that was in fact a typo. So apparently. They're they're replying to people on there and saying, "Oh, hey, that's a good point. We'll take a look at it." You know, that's exactly the kind of stuff that um, we need to hear. To be honest, you know, like 
I, I would have to think that a smart man could go back and look. Our boys, I, I hate to bring it back up, but they gave away the first year, they gave away T-shirts that said Our Boys on it. They gave away stickers if you want something. They gave, I mean, hell, they gave they away. They had patches. They had, yeah, patches. I have a dope patch that has, that has like Our Boys finalist or whatever. Absolutely. They gave the away year. armies and um, uh, hundreds of dollars in prize support to mm -hmm. people who put, place in top three and stuff, you know, and – you can't tell me that boosting your total points to 2500 you know lifting some of the the embargoes per se you know of what is allowed and what isn't allowed to be played and making almost forcing people to buy four lamb raiders back in the day forcing now, people to play it by nine obliterate like you can't tell me that's not good you know oh, it, it's good from a sales point and I don't know if I've spoken on this on here um, but you know through through the spy cat network I've heard that there is basically a power struggle going on right now at games workshop between like three different areas one of them being trade sales and trade sales has this huge you know job of selling their shit. And they're having a hard time selling some of their shit right now, and I'll just leave that as an open-ended statement. So trade sales is like, yo, dogs, we're having a hard time. We got to do X, Y, Z. And I think a lot of that was they took a look at it, and they came out with you know this new uh, tournament, or excuse me, organized play system. And what's nice about that is uh, a lot of people don't know they actually span sponsored the Gamma. I'm <laughs> having a little hard time with some words still. But they sponsored the Gamma. Um, convention at, game, at uh, Las Vegas. So they were actually really? the sponsors of the whole thing, right? Um, and the what's main really sponsors cool, of the whole event? Yeah. Wow. So wow. like this was their big, you know, coming out party. Like, hey, we're beautiful, you know, whatever is a socially acceptable girl, boy, I don't even know anymore. But, and hey, we're here and take us back. And, you know, so that was kind of like the whole atmosphere. And they literally, the head of their trade sales was talking to people, going on camera. We never saw that before. Always it was no comment. We can't say we'd love to talk. We can't say nothing out of Nottingham. So, and now you have trade sales. Do we remember our boys, trade sales was in charge of our boys. Yes. Truth. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. now we got trade so sales. So trade sales might be uh, taking a little bit more of the leads in this power struggle, and we already know through evidence that they, through empirical evidence that they are willing to, to support organized competitive play. Right, and they are definitely on board because they see it as a way. At least the U.S. guys here in the states, like uh, you know, they know what's up. There, there's a lot of old garbage. There's a lot of new blood in there too. You know, sales is sales at the end of the day. But the good thing about it is that this new organized play, this tank shock thing, you know, that's going to be quarterly, and the first one's tanks. It's going to be a series of events, not just one event, but over a quarter. You know, a, um, a quarter in the year, so basically three months time, and. They are giving retailers discounts on product. So if your store is running, you know, this new, like Juice was saying, you know, it's not Road Trader, it's Tank Shock this month, or it might be part of a series right. that's more of a broad name, the store is being encouraged to purchase more stock because at a higher discount because customers are going to be, you know, wanting these tanks to get these rules to play in these events. And getting the swag that you know Haspel was talking about. So it's oh wow, I'm I, loving that. It's kind of an all-encompassing thing, and it looks to be very thoroughly thought out, which is super good bonus on everybody's part. You know what I mean? And this that's kind good of, for us. Yeah, this kind of organized play model has been very successful for you know FFG and uh, yeah. Um, and some some of the other companies out there that have been doing stuff like this. Yeah, Final so, Fantasy. I mean, if, uh, sorry, uh, what is it? Uh, Fantasy, Fantasy Flight Games. Flight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Final Fantasy, the worst RPG on earth. Uh, the, the Golden the, Chocobo. I oh my god. Okay, I don't want to <laughs> get on a tangent, so I will no, no, just no. move on. X Wing. X Wing is basically the biggest uh, yes. war game ever now. Yeah, and we so, didn't, you know we didn't talk about it, but all the X Wing releases sold out. They're already sold yeah. out. Like if you don't so have GW, your wave eight. If Good GW point. wants a piece of that sold-out action, they're going to have to fucking take a, a page out of their playbook, which is support organized play. 
Yeah, and I think it, I think it's a really great thing. And to see the degree of precision and planning that's going into all this stuff. Step one, you know, sponsor Gamma. Step two, you know, have this stuff, have mock-ups ready. They shipped a mock-up of the Blood Bowl box to the event to show off. And some they some did they did live time. interviews, man. Like that's yep. like they did everything they needed to do. You're right. They're 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 putting a, a very good steps forward right now. So you on know, so on issue one of Evan Valdyke's, um Petition. Mm-hmm. It does seem like GW is listening. Yeah, I would give GW mm-hmm. an A plus on that. I do too. Um, so point two is support your independent retailer in FLGS friendly local game store. Don't just push your online store. They will try to sell your product instead of your competitors if you make it worth it. Um, I feel like he's talking about the independent retailers there. Right. Yeah, he's talking. About, he's ta- yeah, he definitely. He's talking because people need a place to play. And yep. right now, since they don't, they don't really support uh, anything uh, for the the local scene, uh, where people need to go to see these models and display, and need to go and play, because that's literally one of the biggest parts of this game. Uh, if you don't support them, they're just going to go on to the wholesaler websites and, and fill out the order forms and get everything at a discount, and that is that that looks lucrative, but actually it, you're selling to them. You know, you're selling to them at wholesale prices, and they're heavily discounting stuff to us. You're making less money, and you're turning less uh, new people into the hobby when you do that. So overall, it's it's not going to be good for the longevity of the hobby. So now is um, – I guess I have a question about this uh, number two from Evan here. Is this referring to the gamers or GW themselves to support local no, game stores? I, I think, think GW, it's yeah. – yeah, I think it's referring to GW because at the time that that – that came out. G Dub was doing a bunch of like web exclusive mm-hmm. stuff that you, that the friendly local game stores could not get, or they made it a pain to get because they weren't getting it at a wholesale discount. Um, gotcha. Now I do know over the last couple of years the per, the percentages have been going, uh, been getting cut. You know they're kind of going up a percent, going up. You know from where a GW a store might was getting it at forty eight percent off now, or excuse me, fifty one percent off now. Um, through the years, that could almost have come down to forty-seven percent off. You know, which four percent's a whole lot off somebody's top line. If if a store's main source of income is GW, uh, so I can see that as well. Um, I would say one thing that they could do about helping out the friendly local game stores is making some of this, like you said, the exclusive stuff. Not necessarily just the media-based things, but the uh, the mail order only stuff. Let that go through a, a local game store. You know some of those individual models. The the two thousand limited edition. Yeah, uh, bring Boy Forge World order forms back. Yes, man. You know? I remember driving to the Battle Bunker in um, Baltimore and buying Forge World. You know uh, that actually was huge to help out a local game store, which didn't seem like that. But I drove with the owner of the store. He scooped up. Um, a couple thousand dollars in Forge World, and just had it in his shelves because it was easily accessible to him. And to and yeah. to be clear, we're not talking about stocking Forge World in the stores. We're talking about no. allowing stores to to do mass orders of Forge World on behalf of and their then, customers. And then you come and pick it up, like or right. whatever at the local game. Yeah, games. and also bring bring back bits. It's insane that they when GW had bits. I remember going to the game store, going to the Gamer Haven, flipping through the bits magazine. Writing down the bits I needed, and they would show up in like two weeks. Well, you know? unfortunately, though, I think with that manufacturing, that's problematic now because they're going mm-hmm. to the injection molding. They which... can break their own molds the same way bits <laughs> people have been doing. Literally, I, I don't think they're going to do that. I've though. seen I've seen it done with literally minimum wage employees. I've, I've seen it done very. <laughs> I've seen it done very successfully. I, I yeah I agree yeah, I I know, it. but I just don't think GW's gonna do that. Yeah, it's um. Well, then don't then don't shit in people's cereal who are trying to fill a void. You know, you know? I, I honestly just a just a little side note. You know, that first year they started banning bits, and then they're like, our sales are down like 1.4 million, and I'm like, you know, or like it was it was just. It's hilarious. so funny that that number matches up very closely to another number I know. Yeah, and I was just like, <laughs> hmm. All right. Uh, Interesting. And I know I wasn't number, the only one selling bits, but I'm that number seems to be exactly the percentage discount difference of a sales number I've heard. Yeah. So <laughs> I was like, well, I don't know what to tell you guys. Like, you know, they they took they took Ford's World out of the. 
the G. I, I don't want to harp on the past. You know, they're, they're no, making, it's, it's not the past. We're ta- we are answering questions. Are they listening now? We know what they've yeah, done in the past. I think they they've are. Been- yeah, and we, uh, to get back to the to the thing, are they supporting FLGSs now? I think they're going to because I think events sell products, and yes. by having organized play with this tank, this tank thing, with they're talking about a campaign with Age of Sigmar. Where you can and and this is we need to clarify this. There they were talking about a points system oh, yeah. where they just let me let me but jump it's in. Not, here, yeah, but it's not points for it just like, <laughs> way too many. Let me be blunt here. Way too many people lost their shit about this single statement that did not read for comprehension on the internet. The statement was that there will be a points system but it didn't say that you would make your you would make your army your age of sigma armies and they would have points it's, it's, it's if you read the statement literally from bowls for comprehension it makes perfect sense but so many people lost their shit over this be, it's it's because, because they wanted it it's good if you you i, really I will you read what i want in a rule every time and dude that is literally what happened people were making hate videos against bowls and i ran the same exact story we had the same info i ran the same exact thing and i'm like this is not what was said this isn't even close to what was said and i literally got on uh, another guy's channel <laughs> hate video and i was like hey man uh, you know, I love what you're doing here. You got a great channel and everything. You know, wish you best of luck. But I'm just wondering, where where was this said? Like, can you point me in the right direction? I'm I'm trying to track this down. And he's like, Oh, it was right here. And I'm like, I don't think that's this is the statement I'm seeing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah 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 blah. blah. They're always wrong and all this stuff. And I'm like, Okay, I get I get it. I got it now. <laughs> you know, like, uh, so sad. It's the haters. <laughs> so, but, but but going back going back to to the statement, if we see within the next three weeks, a month or more, that GW brings back the black boxes, you know, the tournament support, you know, where they give you or, or the issuing a credit. You know, is that what they did at the end, Robbie B., uh, some years ago when you still had a store? Is that they, they gave you just X amount of stuff off? And wasn't it years previous you did get a box of stuff in that you could give yeah. away as prize support once a quarter? You know, um, if they bring that back, is that enough to – would we would we all agree as this being a panel that yes that is basically the minimum or the maximum of what GW could be? Would it qualify as them listening? Yeah, I yes. would absolutely love to see them bring back those trophy packs, man, because mm-hmm. they meant something. It was it was hardware and they were not easy to get. Like you had to win an RTT to get one of those legit. Oh yeah, GW I was trophies. so so jealous of David. Well, I was, oh, I was pissed at Ron Santoni. Every time I came so close to getting one, he dude, would win the damn tournament. Dude, David, our like, first, uh, our first Genghis Khan in Colorado, when we when we were kicking it with Haspel and everything, David came up with his uh, Lost in the Dam Army, uh, and it was soft scores were were in effect, you know, the hobby scores. So David won two games and tied a game in a three round tournament with like 50, 60 people there, and he won the whole event because of his painting score, his sports score, his comp score. And he got that epic, you know, Sigmar dude fighting the Space Marine dude uh, trophy, like that hard one. Because everyone had oh. the Golden Turkey Award. Everyone had one of those already. And then, and this is like one of the last years you can get it. And David won it. First Genghis Khan he showed up into. We roll up in there. Pulls out this army. Uh, pulls it down with his hobby scores. Walks away with it. And I was like, literally, I never had an opportunity to win one of those again. Yeah, it was, oh, I want one so badly. <laughs> Okay, and lastly, I don't mean to go off on a tangent one last time, but or not even it's not even a tangent, just a side roll. What would you guys think? Remember the Game of Skulls? The 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 tournament that they the Throne of Skulls tournament, Throne of Skulls, Game of Skulls, yeah, Throne of Skulls. But now, do you guys remember? It's been probably six years now or five years that now you can just buy a ticket to go. Before you used to have to win a ticket. Yeah, it was like. That was a thing. That was that yeah. was a thing. You had to. Yeah, if you, you to buy tickets. It. You buy tickets to go to grand tournaments. You buy tickets to go to games days. You definitely need to win tickets. They they brought back their grand tournament series, like the Baltimore GT, the yes. Atlanta GT, oh, uh, yes, the, 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 the that they brought that system back where there was like only six to eight of them in a year that you could go to, yeah. and they were like totally GW supported. Um, now, and then you can get like bonuses. I mean, they they can easily bring back a network to do this, and they have the infrastructure to do it. There, it would literally fix every problem. They'd be back on top. X Wing would be would be number two again. 
I the, absolutely agree, Kenny, that that same I'm sorry has to like that. Oh, no, no, good. that's fine. If they did that, it would be an overnight sensation. It would. We wouldn't be able to talk about. I would even think that they would. They posted their schedule, the GT schedule for 2017, and they it, we had the rest of the year to prepare for it. It, it would. It would be overnight. Yeah. It would be an. Inst- it would mm-hmm. be an instant celebrity sellout. Whatever the price of the tickets, they would go for more on eBay. If they said, you know, or whatever, I'm <laughs> saying, like, yeah, I mean, if you only said, you know, they would have to, in some form of fashion, for the first year, get back to a, a buying tickets and stuff. Yeah. I mean, it'd, they, be, it'd be so successful, they would have to say limit one per customer. Like, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Um, and it would immediately, I think that would be the first time, something like that, that we could we could see something give um, Star Wars uh, a run for their money. Yeah, I, I I can definitely see it, and I you know what what trends are you seeing there, Caswell at uh, Gamers Haven? Well, we're we're trying to bring stuff back, and it, what's interesting is that um, it, among uh, Gamers Haven, there's another store further south called uh, J and J's, and there's a there's a group further north up in Denver, and we're we're starting to network together because when Feast of Blades left, it left a big void out here, and mm-hmm. we're trying to just bring all that stuff back, and it's like, um, to, you know, to kind of chime into what Juice was saying, that, that uh, I think that running an actual GT for GW, at this point, things have kind of evolved. It, they used to be the only... The only kid on the block throwing a GT. Now there's all kinds of independent GTs. So I, I kind of don't feel like they need to throw their own. They could they could throw one big event that's like the Games Workshop event in Tennessee or whatever. Um, but the other ones, I mean, how tight would it be if, if Adepticon was officially sanctioned? Well, that's I'll go with that. Mm-hmm. Like, if you uh, big tournament organizers, big TOs, and events have to submit a request, hey, uh, we will accept five major events throughout the year as sanctioned events. Send us your application, you know, or or your um, five minute video or thirty minute video um, interview of why we should pick your event. Okay, I'm I'm with that. But if not, I fully. I would say that they could set up their own, run their own, and endorse their own, and it would either a put some of these other ones, you know, by the wayside. That's a little hard to say, and I apologize, but they aren't independent business owners that are doing this. You know, there aren't. This is just something that, for fun, people have done because there's the void of people GW did it to, to help. They to did it help, to bring yeah. hobby back, and so and you actually be doing them a favor if they didn't have, if they can go and play in these now instead of absolutely. Them. And like, let's just look at the revenue difference. Let's just, and I'm just solely putting it out as an example. Uh, we'll use Feast of Blades because. Um, you know they're they're not in contempt. I'll actually you you run one more. Uh, Neil Gilstrad with Eleventh Company. Uh, his event as of now is kind of on the wayside. Whether or not he's going to do another one this year in the future, um, I pray and hope that he does because Neil is an amazing guy and does amazing stuff. But we're going to use him as an example. Um, if and Neil, in my opinion, can run one of the better events. He's actually been personally called to help run other major events, the uh, LVO, and uh, run doing the scoring at different events and whatnot. His event, as as good as it was, could not even compare, in my opinion, to the dollar value that GW can throw at something. You know what I mean? All of a sudden, Neil is trying to work with a three thousand dollar budget or whoever, whatever the case may be, to make this work and use terrain to make things work and to pull out ideas to make things work. Versus GW saying we have five events a year, our budget is, um, you know, one point two million dollars. We divide that up, you know, as long as we can break even, this will be a good year, you know, something like that, and throwing two hundred thousand dollars. Uh, you know, ninety thousand dollars at an event versus a TO trying to do do this for everyone else and basically trying not to lose a thousand dollars. You know, I mean, come on, like the experience is going to be not even in the same realm. Make it concurrent with a games day system again. Yeah, yeah. I'm down. Yeah, I think ultimately I mean, we may see the return of games day, but you know, let's not walk before we can uh, crawl. 
Yeah. <laughs> We're, R- Rob, so uh, let's, point, let's continue the list. Yeah, uh, so point three, uh, competitively price your products. You can charge a premium because of your quality, but we have finite gaming dollars. You are pricing us out. That one's a little bit more tricky, I feel like. But but I feel so, like we've seen that with the with the start collecting packs that they've put, been putting out. Those are all mm-hmm. incredible deals, um, and they've made it worth it, you know, because they're like, oh well, even if you have all this stuff, here's a formation that goes with it. You yeah, know, yeah, so and, 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 and in their own way, they are doing it. because the thing is, is, GW is never going to lower the prices. Rob, Juice mentioned never. earlier, yeah. they're not going to lower their prices. That's insane as a businessman. But what they are going to be able to do is work within the prices that they set and give us more value, which they've done multiple times in these box sets that are like all these models, it's basically the free HQ. All these models, it's basically a free uh, unit of uh, crisis suits. So they have been doing that. And by making the boxes smaller and cheaper, you know, like this New Orc deal, you know, where it's like knobs, pain boy, dreadnought, like but boys, it's like, yo, literally that's a deal and you get rules out of it. So in their own way, they have listened. In my opinion. And, uh, the only thing I'll say about it is, uh, yes, we will never see lower priced uh, point price per model, right? Uh, GW, your literature. I would like to see if you are sticking to your guns and you have decided a codex is worth $50 now. Fine, because you have a badass codex. It is phenomenal. It is amazing. More than anything we've had in the past. I love it. Give us a $25 codex. They, they kind of have done that, Juice. Um, with the Now, granted, it's only on iOS, so if yeah, you don't have an man. iPad, you're, you're kind of screwed. But no, they do have yeah. those gamer editions that came out that are just the rules, and they're like, what, they're like 20 bu- 25 bucks, mm-hmm. right? Um, so, I mean, that's I love it, so let's transfer. Give me that in paperback, you know, and, and we can talk. Uh, but that, that give, yeah, give, 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 yeah give me a black and white text only uh, all pictures black and white. Give me the give me one of yep. those in paperback, y'all. Well, yeah, sure. how, how how tight would this be? Now, granted, this might this might hurt, and it might not be business. It, it might not be business savvy. Like I'm not business savvy enough to to. But I'm like I would buy a book for seventy five dollars that had all the rules for all the armies in it. Yeah, I would pay 150 bucks. Yeah, yeah. I pay 150 dollars yeah. for that. You're right. Yeah. So, so I do think that on this point, GW is listening. They're doing it in a GW way, uh, for sure. We're never going to see what we really want to happen, uh, but ultimately, it's about getting new people into the hobby because us old gamers, we'll pay whatever fucking something costs. Yeah, yeah. it's Once about getting a new young person hooked, and so right. I think and they we are making the right seen... steps. We haven't seen that new, and I can't remember what it's called, the that battle for V something. Vendra? Okay. Vendra. Yeah, Vendra. We haven't I really actually, seen that yet, but... Oh, Jason, this, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. I, I will say, um, you're right. You're right, Kenny. I, I, I'm taking a step back. GW has been doing this, uh, especially from a NID concept. They have put out more actual rules for NID models in $4 White Dwarf than... I could probably make a NID codex with the last three white dwarfs that had NID models in it, from the Sporosis to the um, Euclids to the um, uh, Horus Specs and all this other stuff, formations, everything else. So I've got a lot of rules for a total of eight or ten bucks, you know. So, okay. Just do everybody else like that. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can definitely see that. But I, I definitely feel like they're, pri- they're pricing the newer stuff. Towards, towards the beginners, like the stuff, the Battle for Verdro stuff, you know, the, co- the start collecting stuff. Will Land Raider ever be 50 bucks again? Probably not. Yeah. But, you know, uh, that's not hey, something... Make a, make, fuck, make, I can't get a Defcopter for a reasonable price right now. I have to go back hey, to the Black Reach box set and find them on eBay. <laughs> make a make a Land Raider as hard to shit as, uh, to kill as it was in 3rd edition, and I'll gladly pay 100 bucks for it. Yeah. Well, they've been, <laughs> you they've been also uh, giving yeah. us more value, too. I mean, with the the last box I bought was the Wolfen box. And when I opened it up, I couldn't believe that every possible iteration of the way to run the Wolfen is actually in there, like in mm. one box. So so they are giving us value, which is good. So yeah, it does yeah. seem like so far we're like three for three on points. Yep. They are Come listening. On. Do we have more points on this petition? Yep. Number four is develop an online community instead of just having a web store online. They Wait. literally just started that up. <laughs> they yep. just yeah, did. They, yeah, they brought back their Facebook page and 
Would, but I would like to go as far to say I would not like – I don't think I care, at least my personality. I wouldn't care if GW started their own blog community or something. Like I feel like that's not a realm they've really ever done, so I don't expect them to try to – They used to have that. a super huge forum. Yeah, but that turned into like a hate fest, and I can understand right. the nightmare of trying to mod that. Which but is why they, they're going to Facebook, you know. But yeah. they do have a tight YouTube channel, and they've been putting out like gameplay videos, like, "Hey, here's how you play the new uh, Overkill." You know, they, yep. there's a gameplay video on that, and they did the same thing with uh with Kalth, with Phil Kelly, uh, kind of arbitrating two players playing the betrayal of Kalth. I like so, how he was like, "Hi, I'm Phil." Like everyone knows who you are, dog. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but it's good. I mean, it, it brings back that sense of community, and it's like, hey, if you if you're worried about how this rule works, just watch this video. We'll show you. They and are. to be honest, in nowadays, a YouTube video is basically an online forum. You know, if you, if you have, and that's a actually I was presence. gonna say they, something they fucked up on is I don't think they have comments activated on the YouTube channel. They don't. And I think that that's a huge mistake because um, I read every comment on the Longwood channel. I read every comment on the Next Level Painting. I know Rob yep, I read reads all every comment. And you're talking like, we're not talking like we have 200 followers. I mean, we got a combined might of over 30,000, 35,000 people. I read every, we read every comment and we take those criticisms to heart. And so there are some haters on there, but I literally just glance over the haters and usually the rest of the people, you know, ignore them too. Like, yeah, I mean, as long as there's not a bunch of personal attacks, I usually just leave yeah. them on there. But once and that's so it's actually out. it's more benefit to have to filter through the hate and see the and see the criticisms that are positive. So that's a mistake that GW is making right now. It's like it's like they don't want to deal with the headache of modding, so they've been doing an uncommentable YouTube channel, and they're going to Facebook now, where Facebook is like a lot less is a lot less personalized uh, in the way people interact. So like. They are taking steps in the right decision, right in the right direction, and I know it really was painful the last time they had their form, and it was really a hate fest. Oh, but I would urge cool. them, I would urge them, you know, just just do it, just just get get, get turn comments back on your in your YouTube channel, man. It's a lot yeah. harder to be anonymous on Facebook too. So just, when you're a hater on Facebook, people people know who you are. The, the yep. game isn't where it was in the beginning of Sixth Edition, when, yeah. when basically they turned it off. You know, like the game isn't. I think the game is a whole lot better. I think the community is a whole lot better. I think there's a whole lot more understanding and acceptance because the massive amount of change that we saw in sixth edition. Yeah, great point. Great point, Juice. It's a it's a great place to be, and you could even argue that the the asking for FAQ input is building an online community too. You know, it, it is. Yeah, that's where that's absolutely. what I'm saying. It's like, so they at point four, absolutely GW is listening. Is there a fifth point? Conduct market research and get on social networks. Yeah. Boom, we just kind of answered that one. Yeah, yeah, they're doing it. GW is, is five for five, man. They're listening. Yeah, I, 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 it's eerily similar. Like it's really crazy how Evan came up with this and then dropped. I mean, obviously, it. if seventeen thousand people signed this petition, GW looked, and then GW also looked at the state of what's happening in the United States, which has got to be their biggest market. They've got to be seeing the YouTube channels, the blogs. We've got two incredibly, three incredible, I think two massive blogs that are American-based that they can see all these comments on. So they, even though they don't have comments on their YouTube channel, they read the other comments. They read comments oh, on other places. Yeah, they get, they get around. I mean, they, they do – their market research is basically – Hey, let's get out there and see what people are saying. You know, well, they're not sending out, um, listening to people's podcasts and sending out C and D's if they aren't listening and watching and reading people. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they got a couple. Uh, they probably got a whole team of. Hey, your job is to look at everything and mm -hmm. at least two. Let people. us they got at least two people listening to the podcast. Actually, that's basically funny. a team. They have a. Yeah, they that's have a team. A team. They actually do, uh, and it was replaced after the whole Chapter House Studio spot the Space Marine debacle. So they have a fresh, uh, fresh legal team in there uh, that's uh, taking a little bit softer approach on things. I feel like, but they're still watching. They're still, they they went after the the German guy that was posting, you know, direct scans of the whole book, scan the whole book and post it up. Yeah, that time. is that is a direct. No matter what country you're in, that's that's illegal. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's definitely a DCMIA thing, and uh, you know, he he he. <laughs> He didn't think so. Well, we see who's still around. Um, <laughs> so there is that. So as long as you're not egregious with it, I feel like they're pretty. Uh, they're, they're letting us do what we need to do to spread the hobby love, and that's great. Yep. 
yep, it's a it's a good thing to see. So, are there any more points on that document? No, that was it. I think we uh, nailed it. I think we nailed it, and I think we get hit our hour kind of in the same fell swoop. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Good to so, do like plan that. so, Rob, I do want to uh, do want you to mention here on the podcast the situation with the mailing list with the uh, newsletter. Oh yeah, a couple of things real quick. So we actually send out a mailing list uh, every almost every other day at least that we post a new video. It turns out we just updated it, and we we're asking people like, "Yo, what do you think of the new newsletter?" And they're like, "Hey, um, uh, what newsletter?" And I'm like, "What?" And apparently it's just been going to everybody's spam filters unless you're like communicating with us on like you know a semi-frequent basis, and Google knew that. So. Everybody, stop what you're doing right now. Go check your spam filters, your spam or junk mail inbox, whatever you know, email thing you have. Click OK or whatever. Send it to your inbox and allow it. And yeah, whatever people, whatever your mail service requires you to do to authorize us as someone who, who you want to hear from, that'd be huge because this ma- th- this um, newsletter is a valuable uh, and convenient tool to getting access to the, vi- the new videos and new exclusive content that drops every day. Yeah, and it's you know it's just a good way to keep up and see see what's happening. But you know, conversely, we were actually wondering like how much you know updates do you want because this stuff it's going to get posted to Facebook. You know, when we post a new video. But the question is, do you guys want like a um, you know like a weekly recap on like a Friday? Like here's all the videos that came out, so you can be like, oh cool, let me go check that. You know, for your weekend viewing pleasure or whatever. Or do you want it every day? Like we're just kind of taking a poll. Um, just kind of. Yeah, do you want it? And do you want it every time something new happens, or do you want it once a week? That's basically the poll right now. The early consensus is weekly, so definitely don't hesitate to hit us up on Facebook, YouTube, anywhere you can get a hold of us and tell us what your what your input is. So that way we can, like we said, we read every comment and we make adjustments based on those comments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we definitely. That's our market research. Air quotes. <laughs> is uh, basically all that. And on a, on a more personal note, got a lot more well wishes and things for my uh, <clears throat> my face and everything. And uh, uh, fortunately, it, it seems to be, once the swelling's gone down a bit, it's uh, a lot of muscle memories back, not slurring and drooling on myself as, quite as much, but uh, still not able to feel anything uh, but <laughs> but the expressions are, are, are there and they're, they're not they're not kind of lost they're just a little bit. We, you know, we also like, need we also need to mention that this is um this podcast like first off Rob stepped away to deal with things now and, and you were just getting me thinking about drinking Rob because like I know one of the hard things for you to do is drink right now and you're you're healing you're getting better every day and I know at Adepticon you'll be perfectly healed but we did mention earlier after when you stepped away and I'm not gonna break it down right here I'm gonna tell people go to longword.net check out the after hours recording of the podcast where you hear everything that we do as we lead up to these games and that's what we're these podcasts that's a new piece of content me Haspel and, and uh, juice behind Rob's back broke down essentially a um, new version of getting iced that we're gonna be encouraging you guys to play with us at Adepticon and it's gonna hurt it's gonna hurt and I'm not gonna even tell Rob about it because Rob missed it he's not to go back and watch it to see what it is and he's been involved in it and um, so definitely go back, read some, uh, listen to this, because that's the only way you can hear some of the ridiculous shit is checking out the After Hours podcast. I think that Rob is calling it the uh, Speakeasy, <laughs> the Long War yes. Speakeasy. And you're going to be able to check that out on the Long War.net. It's literally going to be 100% exclusive, just like the webcast. You won't be able to see it anywhere else. So definitely check that out. Yep. So we'll see you, uh, we'll see you next week at Adepticon. I think we will have one more podcast still. Uh, we'll put out and record. And probably. also, we're we're taking off uh, Easter, mm-hmm. so we're not gonna have a battle report. We're not gonna have a tutorial. Uh, we're not gonna have um, something else. We might not even have a webcast, but we will have some f- form of a podcast. It might be a podcast light, letting you guys know that we're on the road to Adepticon, and we'll see you guys there. I think Kenny's gonna wish everybody a happy Easter. That's what I think. <laughs> oh yeah, happy Hippie Ghost Day. Oh, I knew you couldn't. I knew you couldn't. Mm, I knew it. Can't go one year without saying it. Yeah, couldn't 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 leave it alone. All right, guys. Um, Haspel, why don't you take us out? Um. Okay. Um. During the rectification of the Voldrani, the Traveler came as a large and moving Torg. Then, during the third reconciliation, the last of the Kendrick supplicants, they chose a new form for him, that of a giant slower. Many shoves and zools knew what it was to be roasted in the depths of the slower that day. I can tell you. Ah, uh, Rick Morandis. Ha, 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 ha.